Welcome back to my beginner guide for CST Microwave Studio. In this lesson, I'm going to show you around the graphical user interface. So by following the first video about how to set up your simulation environment, you should have the following working area. Let's have a look at the top taskbar. We have home, modeling, simulation, post-processing and view. Let's start with the home tab. Here, there are two important buttons to know about. The first will be your solver setup, noting that you can change the type of solver from this drop down menu. The other important tool here is the macro bar. I recommend going through and seeing what type of macros are here and what is possible with your version of CSD. Two very important ones that I use quite a lot are calculate analytical line impedance. This is a macro tool to help you calculate, for example, the thickness of a 50 ohm line, depending on the substrate you have selected. I'm gonna exit this tool. Another important tool here is through macros, solver, ports, calculate port extension coefficient. And this will automatically create a port around the face of a microstrip line. Let's close this. On the side is your navigation tree. Two important areas are your components, where you'll find your 3D design, and your 1D results, where you'll find your S parameters. Down the bottom, we have a parameter list, where we can create parameters such as width of a 50 ohm line might equal 1.3 millimeters. Or for example, you wanted your, um, your copper base or the substrate, to actually be width 50 times by 10. So 10 times larger than the width. And it comes up as 13 down the bottom. Okay, let's continue on. Modeling tab, this is how we're gonna create all of our objects. For example, here we have all of our shapes, starting with brick. To create a brick, select it. And we can do this in two ways, by clicking escape, which will bring up the following box where we can create the geometry from our X, Y, and Z coordinates, or we can freehand it. Double click on the working plane, create a box, and extrude up, all with double clicks. You can tweak the values of the brick, and once you're happy with it, please click OK. One important thing to notice here is the type of material. So I want PEC. I click on this, I can rename it to a cube and click OK. And now we have our first object. Let's move along. Now I'm gonna point your attention to the transform, align, bend and Boolean operations. Here, if we drop down our components tree, click on the cube we just made, we can now access the transform objects. For example, translate, the easiest way to approach this is to click on one of the arrows and see what's changing in the translation vector. I can see two is changing in the y direction, so I know this is the y direction. Maybe I want to translate it by 19 millimeters. I can click OK. I'm going to click Space, and we can see that our object has been translated from the origin 19 millimeters. Now, to move the object around, I'm clicking Mouse Wheel In, and I'm wiggling my mouse. I'm scroll wheeling to zoom in and out. And if I want to check a different face that is not visible, I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna left click whilst clicking on the object and then pulling to the left to spin it around. Another tool is shift and left click and that's gonna be your rotation, but I don't touch this too often. I mainly use control, left click. Perfect. We have a line where we can align two faces uh, we can chamfer edge with blend and boolean. We can also create another object and subtract it from each other. So let's try that now. I'm going to click on cube, transform, translate, slightly a bit down, copy this value, preview, OK. Now we have two objects. Now I can either add them together or I actually want to subtract them from one another. Keep the original shape you want to keep drop down boolean to subtract, click on the second object and enter. And now you're left over with the remaining part. 
and I can transform this if I want to, pull it down, okay, and so forth. Another important tool through the graphical user interface is our picks. So we can pick a pa uh, face, we can pick a point. Um, let's see how this works. In the picks, I'm going to use pick face and just note all the short keys. They're gonna help you quite a fair bit in CST. I can select a face, let's select this one here, and you see it's got a dotted pattern. Another very important tool is here, is our extrude face. So we're going to extrude. Let's say we want to um, added part is our name. And we want a height of maybe four millimeters. And the height is always normal to the surface or the plane that you select. I want it to be the same material, PEC. Okay, and I'm gonna click, okay, perfect. And I added that. Maybe I want to join these two together. I can click, select the first part and then click Boolean and then the second part, or I can highlight both and then click the Boolean function and I'll add them both together. Okay, perfect. So um, pick points. You can see we can pick between two points. And for example, we could add a lumped element or we could add two parts or we could select two different points of two objects and we could then join those two objects with a line. Okay, clear the picks with the clear picks button. Let's move on to simulation. Okay, two very important things here. We're gonna use the waveguide port quite a fair bit, but a macro as I mentioned will solve this and do it for us. Lumped element if we want a resistive or a complex load. And here we've got our solvers set up. We also have post-processing and view, but we're not gonna focus too much of this and I might touch on this in a more advanced video. So this is just the basic user interface of CST.